or lying? You're number one. Remember that. Okay. All right. So today we're going to do some uh, group work. So that's what that's about. Um, and we're going to do compute the probability for the quantum coin. And um, we want to get an explicit expression for it and have an interpretation for the h bar goes to zero limit. Try to uh, make some sense out of that. Um, so the tools that we need is going to be uh, matrix exponentiation. And this is what we cover uh, towards the end of the last lecture. And in here, the point was that to take the matrix exponential, you need to be able to diagonalize the matrix and find this A and A inverse matrices. So I'm going to spend the first 10 minutes of the lecture just to give you some properties of our mission matrices that are going to help you with this. Uh, and then I'll set up the problem and we'll split up into our groups and work on it. Uh, so these are the properties that we want for the permission matrix. Uh, we want to, we'll show that the eigenvalues of a permission matrix are real, the eigenvectors are orthogonal, and then we're going to create the diagonalizing matrix matrices to put it into, into a diagonal form. Um, these are standard results, and I'm just having them so that we have this, we can all work with this and we can use these assumptions. So for first, I'm going to show that the eigenvalues are real. Uh, I assume I have an eigenvector with an eigenvector vi with an eigenvalue lambda i. And by definition, this is going to be, uh, if I take lambda i times the norm squared, this is just equal to this. And then by this assumption, I can take the lambda i inside and multiply it times this. And then by, so this is by linearity. And then by this assumption, I can just replace the lambda i by the h. And then by taking the complex conjugation, I can switch the order of the i and the i. And then I take the uh, transpose conjugate of the Hermitian matrix. Uh, due to the Hermitian property, this is just equal to h. And so now we can just have that lambda i. I can just substitute h by lambda i. And then I can factor out the lambda i, the complex conjugate. And in here, again, this is just, uh, I can take the complex conjugate of this and remove this. And this is equal to the norm squared. And so I get that lambda i is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda i. So I have that lambda i is real. So I expect that you've seen a proof like this before. This is just a uh, review of it. Um, now I want to show that the eigenvalues are orthogonal. So I take an eigenvalue lambda i and lambda j. I assume that lambda i and lambda j are not equal to each other. So this proof only works if lambda i and lambda j are different. And in general, this works for, this doesn't hold for different if the eigenvalue is the same. But in general, we expect the eigenvalues to be distinct, to have multiplicity one, so that we can diagonalize. Uh, the, it's the same type of idea where I start with this left-hand side with the dot product of uh, vj and vi, and I multiply it by lambda i on the outside, and I can bring it in inside by linearity, and by this property I can translate it into h. I take the complex conjugate, and I use the permission property to remove the conjugate transpose. And then I pull out the lambda j complex conjugate. And then I take the first, I know that this is real from the previous part. So I can just write that lambda j. And then this, I can take the complex conjugate to switch the order of i and j. And so I have that this is equal to this. I have this, so 
by the fact that lambda j and lambda i are distinct, I have that this uh, dot product has to be equal to zero. So they're orthogonal. Again, standard result, just reviewing it. Okay, but let me know if you have any questions. And then for the diagonalization, I introduced the standard basis E1 through EN for a n-dimensional uh, Hermitian matrix. And I introduce a matrix that maps EI to the eigenvectors. And also I'm gonna take a normalization where VI dot VI is equal to one. I can just scale the eigenvector and I normalize them this way so that uh, I can have the inverse. But anyway, uh, I define this matrix A this way. And in particular, if I write in a coordinate format, A is the columns of A are just the eigenvectors V1 through Vn with, again, the property that they're normalized to length one. And uh, recall that if I'm writing the elements of a matrix, uh, matrix M, the element IJ is just going to be this dot product. I apply M to this basis, and then I take the co-product with this EI. So in here, we can see that A and A uh, uh, transpose conjugate times A is equal to the identity, because when we do this, when we look at the entries of the matrix, we apply this to get, we get this VI or VJ, and then by taking the uh, transpose conjugate, we get VI, and this are by the previous result, they're orthogonal, and by the normalization, they're equal to one. So we got that this is the identity matrix, and so we have that the inverse of A is going to be the transpose conjugate. And this is helping us a lot in the matrix exponentiation because we have to take the inverse of a matrix, and taking inverses are difficult. So this is just gonna save us a lot of work, just knowing that we need to do the complex conjugate. And then also now we can show that we get a diagonal matrix by taking this uh, product of matrices. And again, I'm looking at the HIJ entry. This is gonna give me the entry HIJ of the Hermitian matrix, or sorry, this is uh, the entry A complex conjugate H A I J and by the definition of A I have that this is V I this is V J and then since V I is an eigenvector I can pull, the, pull out the lambda I and this are going to be orthonormal so I get lambda I if I is equal to J and zero if I is not equal to J so I can translate this to say that H, I can diagonalize H this way, where lambda is gonna be a diagonal matrix, matrix with the eigenvalues. And using this diagonalization, I can take the exponential of my H matrix this way. So this properties help you take the exponential of a Hermitian matrix. Uh, so I just wanted to go through this quick properties and now the question is the following. We have the wave function psi of t, which is a linear combination of the heads and tails. It's our quantum coin at time t and it evolves according to a Schrodinger equation and the Hamiltonian that I've chosen uh, is going to be this Hermitian operator is the, yes. In our, our previous cases, when you got the indices there, this A dagger, uh, J, I. J. Yeah. Good catch. 
Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, it's JI. Um, so, uh, so now we're going to do the quantum coin. It evolves along this uh, using this uh, permission operator and the Schrodinger equation. This is the simplest, um, what are called the simplest non-trivial uh, Hermitian operators in two dimensions. And we're going to take the initial conditions to be tails. So our coin starts in tails and it evolves according to this Hermitian operator. And the question now that we've seen the postulates and we know how to take the exponential of a matrix is going to be, what's the probability that you measure t at time t, that you measure tails at time t? And um, so this is what we're going to do for the rest of the class. Uh, this is the roadmap to uh, solving this. Uh, solve the Schrodinger equation, meaning put it into the exponential form, and then exponentiate the matrix, which you need to find the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors, and then diagonalize the matrix. And then after that, simplify your result and find the probability. And so this is going to be the roadmap. And if we, I was aiming to do it in about by in 30 minutes, give you 30 minutes to do it, and we can come back and check our solutions. But we'll take the time that we need. Um, any questions? Did you give us which, um, in the matrix representation, which base vectors has which is tails? Uh, what I'm assuming here, yeah, so uh, heads is going to be 1, 0, and tails is going to be 0, 1. Is that it? Yeah. Any other questions? All right. So now I'll stop.